Wait, are we gonna be sh screen sharing or anything? Yeah, I got the screen share action. Oh. Are we talking more char more characters tonight? Well, uh... We'll just be inter interviewing Moose here? It, that, that's the initial thing, yeah. Okay. Oh, and that's the bonus time that people that listen to audio... The video people don't get that. Hey, check it out. This is the Crunchcast. We're back with another episode. A requested episode. The ones, you know, those ones that people actually want to hear. Um, what? There was a little while back here on the... Um, oops, sorry. I'm covering the video with stuff. Uh, anyway, this is Crunchcast episode 43. Um, a little while back, there was a sort of an unofficial poll of... Who do you want on the show? And uh, Maury Mountain, uh, or if you're on the poly count, do you still go by Moose on there? Is that still your user? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I still go by Moose. Cool. Um, he was requested. And now here he is. Sweet. I am here. So for those that don't know, um, you work at Epic. Correct. Uh, Epic movie games. There's Unreal Engine people and the ones, you know, all them Gears of Wars and stuff. Unreal's. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, currently I'm the lead environment artist oh, at, wow. uh, at Epic. And, lead uh, environment artist, yeah. folks. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, you can you can check out some of his work at morymountain.blogspot.com. I'll put that link in the uh, comments. And you can yeah, check out... My, uh, yeah, this is my work in progress blog that is updated uh, kind of frequently. My video card died, so I stopped, but hopefully soon I'll start doing it more. And that always sucks. Yeah. And uh, for those that are curious, you know that that I guess unofficial poll of who you went on was quite a while back, and the reason it took us this long is because uh, you recently moved, and I guess yeah, you, what, you said you just bought a cam today. <laughs> yeah, I just that, bought a camera cool. today. Yeah, I uh, moved about four months ago, and you know, just got a camera in my office. It's mostly set up except for the boxes and crap behind Sweet. me. <laughs> so you got a camera just for the Crunchcast. Yeah, yep. this is my. Crunchcast camera. Woo. And, that, and guess what, folks? Uh, Jesse Sosa's here, too, hiding in the background. That scary floating head that he always is. I am currently eating. Uh, this was... I only knew about this Crunchcast, what, like two minutes ago? Yeah. Um, yeah but I'll be done here soon. It's the classic situation. John <laughs> Jones is like, hey, let's set all these times and do all this stuff and do it here. And then, and it's it's 30 minutes later, and he's not even answering texts on the telephone. So who knows where he is? Might be busy again. Um, as some might say in the Polycount Hangouts, he probably got kidnapped. But <laughs> he's probably just getting laid or drinking a beer somewhere. Why not? Why not? <laughs> All right. I guess I'm, I'm probably going to be useless for the next 10 minutes as I need to finish eating. So I'm just going to I'll just put my screen share up. Oh, no problem. I'll just uh, bombard Murray here with a... Uh, Sweet. Bunch of questions. What are you so, eating? Me? Yeah. Just a burrito. Ooh. We were smoking. We were smoking uka earlier, and I just felt like eating a burrito. Burritos are delicious. It's my easiest to make food. <laughs> so, Mari. Yes. How's it going? How come you always treat all those poor little girls so horribly on your talk show? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, get what They're. <laughs> Sometimes, I don't know, they just, they just really uh, cut me deep. I have to yeah. cut them back. We've seen those shows, right, where he brings on somebody and they're like, oh, you're my greatest fear. is like cotton ball. So they bring out a whole giant <laughs> cotton ball man to attack her. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I watched it uh, like maybe eight or nine years ago, but I haven't, I haven't watched any daytime TV in forever. It's crazy. That stuff is still on. It's all the same shows. When, but, and every once in a while you'll see a YouTube clip, but none of that is yeah. really important. Yeah, um, and, uh, he does the um, "Are you the daddy?" Yeah, yeah, we love that stuff. The real father, <laughs> and the guy gets up and dances. That's the best part. That's really the best. It's like a it's, they've had a resurgence of those shows thanks to the internet. Yeah. No, but again, none of this is important. Um. So, uh, Maury, what what uh, what got you to say, "Hey, I want to make some video games"? Um. I don't know, but uh. It, it's kind of tricky, but I guess in college, I, I was going to be a musician. I was planning to be a violinist. Like, that was my hopes and dreams and goals and love. And So you were and actually got, in college just for that, specifically? Yeah, you were, yeah, yeah okay. I, I, I auditioned, and I auditioned to, like, 12 schools, and 
I finally went to the one I wanted to. And when I was there, I had, I don't know, they, I saw a thing that was computer art and I, uh, I just got a computer and I like to draw. So I was like, Hey, art is cool. Computer art is cool. I like web pages. So I just started doing it and guys in the dorm were playing quake and, uh, UT and half-life. And I think once I found that like you could download a naked skin or something of some, oh, yeah. some, some naked chick. And I was like, how'd they do that? I want to make a naked chick what? skin. And, and I guess I just researched it and figured it out. And I guess for the next like three years or four years of college, it was just having fun, like doing stuff on Polycount when it's like in the very early days, um, Skindom, the other site long, long ass time ago. And just yeah, doing skin can do PMP. And, yeah. You made, you probably, you, I can't remember. I'm sure you made a few player models back for Quake 2 days, didn't you? Or did you just? I, I didn't make any player models. I just, I actually didn't know what UV maps were. Uh, or anything oh, you know until, people today still don't know yeah <laughs> i think i did like two skins before i realized what a uv map was i just thought i just thought the flat textures look really cool and i thought people's art looked really cool on them so i just yeah like, whatever i'm gonna try it. stuff right yeah so yeah, that was pretty much and then, yeah. and then eventually it just got to the point where i was like hey i could do this for a living like this could be fun this could be cool and i uh, started applying to places and i decided that i just love games and I mean, I've always loved games, and I've always wanted to do that. So, what what uh, what year did you actually get your first job? Two thousand three. Okay, so that's not yeah. a, that's that's still in a time before, yeah. People got in for being modders. Like there really wasn't a lot of school for games. There was a few. Yeah. There was some ideas, and there were some crazy curriculums out there, but there wasn't yeah. very much. Very limited. I actually got a lot of flack in school for doing game art and textures and focusing on low poly models, like learning how to do that. Like they told me I was wasting my time and that I wasn't doing as it, but I was like, fuck you, whatever I'll do what I want. And yeah. Hey, so, hey, if I could tell you how many times people told me I was wasting my time <laughs> on whatever I was doing with any sort of video games. I, mean, I, yeah. I think you might be wrong. Yeah. So it, it ended up working out and I don't know, I guess they, I, my last year I, I did an independent study where I, uh, got a bunch of students we made started making a mod we never finished it but it was just a group of us working on a mod together it was really fun and um yeah i just i love games and love art in games and, and are you good imagine you teaching doing anything else currently or am i teaching no okay so I, i'd like to i've gone back to the college i graduated from bowling green right. state university in ohio and get, i've given two lectures there um, and workshops yeah i just wanted to clarify since you said doing something with students just to be sure Oh yeah, that was that was just a independent study where I was a student as well, and other students oh, right joined in with me, and we all kind of worked together and um, did like a hundred hundreds of concepts and some player models and stuff for UT two K three. Excellent. <clears throat> awesome. So uh, oh. you're talking about like you know back in the days doing skins. I did the same thing. I immediately mm -hmm. started by just doing skins and kind of got started by skinning characters and some of the earliest work I did was actually working on character textures not in the models mm -hmm. not the UVs but just textures but it seems like we both ended up being more like environment guys mm -hmm. how does that even happen yeah I don't know my uh, actually the when I got the job in 2003 it was as an environment texture artist like uh, Kevin Johnstone contacted me and said they were looking for an environment texture artist and I said hey that sounds cool like I, yeah, I'll, I'll go for it. And I applied and I got an art test and it was just a lot of, uh, doing painting some wall textures and floor textures and trims and tiling stuff. And eventually just did a whole set, uh, when I started at Bion studios in 2003. Nice. Oh, what was that game again? Uh, uh, Unreal Championship 2. Unreal Championship 2. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was that one or there was another game from back then. Because I remember uh, one of those... Yeah, I, I used to know Kevin back in the days, too, from the, the yeah. mod scene and stuff. I remember he got one of his first jobs. I, God, I can't remember the name of the game now. I feel bad, but whatever. I know I know both of you guys ended up at Epic and are both pretty awesome. <laughs> right. He would say Chakers. awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool that he helped you out, too. Because I remember early in the days, I was just modding skins and I didn't understand anything. Yeah. I, uh, I ended up, like I made a couple skins and I found a, a skin site on GeoCities. Like I didn't know about Planet Quake or any of the actual sites. Yeah. Well, this was like 1997, six? Mm -hmm. Definitely 96, but um, 
I didn't know. And it was just some guy that had a GeoCity site, and he was encouraging me to keep doing what I was doing. And it just wasn't the right way of doing things. And then when I met, I don't know, I saw Kevin's scans. I was like, holy crap, these are actually good. And I'm like, this is, these are dope. Because, yeah. you know, most people were just like chopping up images and just tossing them on there. Nobody was really painting anything. Just yeah. bullshit stuff. And then once I saw his art, I was like, oh, and then he kind of set me straight. Yeah. Draw. On Draw. the path, on the path of like really more creative <laughs> ideas. So, yeah. There was actually a, a, one of the threads on Polycount recently that like post all your old artwork. And I found all my old stuff from like 99 and 2000. And, wow. I've been collecting it and some of my oh, first yeah. skins ever. And yeah. looking at it now, it's kind of like, good. I did that with I the wish, mouse, but I wish I could post some of my older art, but it's all on zip disk. So I need to go find a zip drive before I can actually pull it off. <laughs> Dude, I've got one. I actually ordered one off of eBay. I got it for like $5 or something that I had like 12 zip disks with tons of old art. I was just like, I need to find one. And I found one on eBay for five bucks. And God, if I could find all the old art, it, I mean, it'd be useless. <laughs> it'd be like yeah. all these, all these Quake one or like MD MD two format like Quake two <laughs> models and stuff. Hell yeah. Somebody linked me not too long ago an archive of my old site and it has a bunch of my old Quake one and Quake two skins on it. I should post those up somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fun times. A lot of people take for uh, advantage nowadays that there's uh, resources like YouTube and all that stuff. Uh, man, I wish I wish there was YouTube back then. Anything yeah. you want, there's there's tutorials on it out there nowadays. Yeah. I remember Skindom was like the place I would go, like because I remember there were a bunch of tutorials up there. I can't remember who wrote them, but yeah, Skindom um, was awesome. By yeah. the way, John oh. just texted me and said that um, he's, he's like, oh fuck, sorry, I forgot working late. So mm. that's sorry. fine. You don't get to hear yeah. his beautiful, eloquent voice tonight, ladies. <laughs> Rock and roll. Now, yeah, yeah, that's uh, what what uh, what player skins did you work on, Moose? Uh, back in the day, um, I'm trying to remember. I know I did. I textured a bunch of uh, Pior's models. Uh, yeah. Uh, the the Capoeira fighter. Um, there was one night. Like, did you ever do Paralyph Night? <laughs> the the night or which one was that one? The Paralyph Night. Yeah, did you ever texture that one? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. There's some very obscure references that like nobody will get. <laughs> yeah, if you, did can you ever texture me, uh, Rada Mahata? <laughs> out of pure's models i did um the the bunny girl that he yeah. did um there was a well cool night wasn't him who did cool night he's a oh, fuck. Oh, i may have it on my hard drive here I'm, I'm looking no i don't have that i did cool night and then uh i believe i did uh the copperware guy but i don't yeah. think i ever posted that one i just started it yeah i never finished the bunny i i got like three quarters of the way through it and scrapped half the stuff I was doing. It was like, yeah. I was trying to go for like some biker, like some dirt bike chick. And I'm like, I kind of, I look at it now and I'm like, this is pretty sweet. I wish I would, I, would fin I should finish that. Uh, I've got a ton of things on my. The Quake There's community a... would appreciate it so much. Yeah. Oh, new skin. <laughs> yeah. The, okay. um, that was right around the time when I had my first job. So I had kind of stopped doing that because I just was left with no creativity at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah, I was, I was like just trying to learn and like, I would try, I would do like one a week. <clears throat> I know like uh, some of the old like day challenges, like do a skin in 24 hours, yeah. uh, like bunker and like that old, uh, that one. And there was one other one. Uh, good old bunker. Yeah. yeah it's the, uh, the, is that the Bobo the Seal one? Yeah. Yeah. That should be still easy to find. Yeah, well, there's the old SDK thread now. Uh -huh. That's still hot. If, 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 if people are interested in skinning like the old days, well, you go to Polycount and you go to the SDK thread. What is that? This isn't the pimping, right? Yeah. I've actually got a yeah. few models in there that are... That I think I, I my when I posted the models, I said, some of these models are older than you. <laughs> I've heard how young people... One was like from 2005 or something. I don't know. But I think I, I found a... Some of the old stuff. I, I actually have never, I've never browsed that thread. I need to go check that out. There's some good stuff there. I mean, like I said, if you just want to skin something, I know I did. Um, just most recently, oh, not most recently, it was probably like a year ago now. Uh, Mops Goblin he made. Yeah, that one's really good. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, sorry, the Witchblade skin was one of my first ones that I had done uh -huh. for UT. 
I remember, I remember yeah. that. <laughs> Do they have Dragon Knight up there? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I, I have got that one locally on my machine. Yeah, that Dragon Knight was awesome. Oh yeah, that was the guy that actually kind of rode the dragon, right? It was like a full. Yeah, that one. It was like a, a full mount. Kinds of, that one broke all kinds of uh, systems in, in Quake. You had to go and uh, yeah. <laughs> adjust um, I, I, I and I's and all that stuff. Oh man, people just won't know what we're talking about, though. That's the thing. <laughs> Shit's too deep. Yeah, I love this kind of stuff. Even though, like, day to day in the past, I guess six or seven years, it's been normal maps and diffuse specs and normals. Like, yeah. I still love sketching and drawing and painting it by hands. I mean, even with the normal map stuff, we I still do a lot of that uh, painting by hands. Um, yeah. uh, just on just to get the feel, and I mean, even though we use like some. Uh, photo textures as reference it, it's still just i don't know feels great just to draw and, hell yeah it does yeah there's a that's what i'm loving about doing my own stuff right now is just that i can i can reconnect with what i used to really love about art mm -hmm. yeah, i'm uh i'm working on some torchlight weapons that i've just over the past like before my video card died i've been making some weapons like a set for that that i don't know it's just just for fun and i, don't know, I like torchlight it's a fun game and you can mod it so hell yeah i was gonna yeah. ask if you had any personal projects going on right now yeah that one's the big one i have like two or three others like there's a bigger torchlight mod that is like a, a whole environment set that i guess I, I started for torchlight one that i scrapped and i'm redoing out for torchlight two but i'm gonna wait till they release the tools to really pursue it and i mean i may never even finish it like the a lot of the skins that I started and sometimes it just gets really busy with the office and when oh, I get home I want to watch uh, Burn Notice or something else. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, know, so I, I think, know that feeling, man. I think uh, a lot of the people that would be listening right now kind of want to know what a, a day in the life is like at, at Epic. Well, that sounds about uh, right. Yeah. It, uh, <clears throat> so being a, a lead environment artist now, I mean, my day is kind of controlled by uh, – what the project needs and what I want to do. Um, I guess I can go back to like years three. Um, I mean, pretty much I would come in and I would have a list of things that I was to accomplish. And I would just, if I was tech mid texture or something, I would just keep going and chug at it and get around and get up and walk around and talk to people. And uh, like if I got to a certain point or I was stuck on a model, I would go talk to some uh, of the other artists. That I know like, on Gears 3, when I was working on the Tempest, the, spoiler alert, the big bug dragon thing, the big beetle, mm -hmm. uh, I was having a really hard time for like the first, I mean, that thing took forever to do just because it was massive. And I was having a really hard time for the first couple of weeks and worked a lot with Jordan Walker and uh, Chris Wells, the guy who modeled it. Jordan uh, worked a lot with the, some of the, with the shaders on it and we tried to figure out a cool look and the art director, Chris Perna and art lead Wyeth uh, Johnson at the time. It was just... I don't know. It's a lot of collaboration and uh, trying to just get looks right. And day to day, it's, I mean, we're just kind of hanging out with each other, making cool art, and, and I guess not stressing too hard, except when we have to, whenever it's time to ship a game. But um, yeah, there's a lot of collaboration and being surrounded by a lot of awesome people really makes my day to day relaxing and cool. And uh, yeah. All right. I can see that. Now, I've been in a few of those larger studios where you're just so happy to be around certain talent. It's like, oh, mm. everybody around me is so good. This is going to work out so great. Yeah. And then, then there are the days where, like, crap, everyone's awesome and I'm terrible. And yeah. The artist, the artist depression. <laughs> I'm an artist and I hate everything in. I do, even though, look at my portfolio. Wait. No, I hate my portfolio too. I, I suck. Hate. It all sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the one thing about being an artist. You always have that tortured side of you. You can never, you always judge yourself and all that. It's it's a pretty tough thing to get past. Mm. Yeah. How many times a week do we get, I'm sad, threads and general discussion on Polygon. All right, folks? We get it. You're sad. I, mean, I get sad as fuck all the time, too. You know what I do? Just sit around and play some video games or something and do art later. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I try to do when I come home. I try to just like shut my brain off, and so that when I come in, I'm always fresh in the day. And like sometimes, uh, like if I'm really jiving at night, I'll do some personal stuff. But most of the time, it's I come home and I shut off and I relax. And I either play games or do whatever. But um, yeah, 
I love I, I love being at Epic. It's amazing. Like just everything's great. The people are great. The company's great. It's always good to work on new and exciting, cool things, and it's always extremely challenging. For that's if, awesome. Uh, you start getting comfortable, then we change something in the engine, and you have to learn something new, or some new tech comes out, and we're like, rock. Or someone figures out a new technique, and it's like, okay, I got to learn that technique. Or someone's doing six stuff in ZBrush, and it's like, oh, I want to do that six stuff too. Or yeah, someone someone tries working with some other package, and like Moto, or doing some crazy stuff with scripts in Max, or yeah, it's just it's pretty cool. I'm running into that now because we just hired a new FX artist and sitting beside him pulling out FX and I'm like, I've, you know, I've dabbled in particles. I have to do plenty yeah. for games, but a guy is an actual focus specialist at FX and you know he's good awesome. at other things too, but it's just, he's so good at it. It's like, mm-hmm. oh God, I can learn so much just looking to my right. Yeah. yeah. It's always nice working with a specialist sometimes. You learn so much. Yeah, it's, it's one thing with Epic too. There are a lot of specialists. Like we have... Uh, there are a handful of people that do kind of go, I guess, all ways. Um, but a lot of people, like for the majority of my time at Epic, it's been textures and UI. And so that I do textures for a lot of stuff, like only textures. Like I'll go and do some crazy bump stuff to normals in the past, but it's pretty much just been textures. Like I, I get a stack of models and kind of texture them. And, uh, some guys will make some vehicles or weapons, or I'll get a character here and there, and it's just like texture, go, 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 go. And we have, I think three, we have three effects artists that just do effects, and uh, a couple of tech tech artists who just do shaders and tech, really techy stuff. And, oh man, that would kind of drive me crazy though. I, I love uh, touching as many aspects of of art as I can. Usually, when I'm done with characters, I always. Uh, request to be put on environment so I could do props and set dressing. Like that's, that's just another thing I really love doing. Yeah. yeah I, was gonna I, say can't, I can't be pigeonholed. There's definitely yeah. a, a plus and minus to that for one. You can just really focus on something and get really good at it. Yeah. But the downside is it does get that repetitive thing. And I've noticed it where I'll have to be, you know, taking on a lot of hats and go from one thing to another thing. And, and then I try to go back to that and I'm like, Oh, I'm not uh, not up to speed, <laughs> and I feel like yeah. an asshole. It takes a day or so to get my keys back and stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, while while people do like focus and specialize, I mean, there are there's a lot of flexibility for floating. Like I, I while working on Infinity Blade Dungeons, like I did some models and concept art, and uh, just just for it was a smaller team, and it was that a like just for fun, and it's all all good. But yeah, I agree. Like getting pigeonholed is not fun, but every, but it's also uh, the leadership at Epic is really good about letting you branch out if you want to try other things. Like it's not like, oh my god, that's all you do. You're a, you're a cog in the line. Well, that's good. Well, it seems like a, a lot of people have been there longer than at some other studios. Maybe like it seems like a lot of people I've known that have been at Epic have been there for years. Mm-hmm. They don't yeah, seem yeah. to be a company that's hire a bunch of people, lay them all off. You know, they, they yeah. like to find the right people and hold on to them. Yeah, I think I'm in on my ninth year now. Uh, so there you July go. will be ten years. How, how long has Kevin been there? Like fifteen years or something? Uh, Kevin is, I think, nine years as well. He's forever old. And he was, I think, he was at uh, I can't remember where he was before that. Uh, before Scion and Epic. My brain is failing. <laughs> uh, that's fine. No, it's just that's cool because a lot of studios have been at you know you sometimes have been there like four or five years but a lot of times you'll be there a year or so and then like I said they do the whole layoff thing and it's mm-hmm. it's just not right. No, it's not. It's, it's tragic. not helping anybody. Yeah. <laughs> so what type of games are you playing right now? Um, I still play Bayonetta and SSX. Excellent. Weekly. Hey. I, I adore those games, and I always have my PSP with me, and so I can play Monster Hunter. I uh, play the the Monster Hunter Third. I imported it from Japan, and I have to play it. <laughs> it's just crack. That's so nerdy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, one of the, I found out I was in a play test the other day, and one of the t- I was talking about Monster Hunter because I think the the new video for the one for the Wii U came out and. I, I found out there's like two or three testers who are crazy into it as well, so we're gonna nerd out and get our PSP on. <laughs> the bigger the company you're at, the more people you're, you're gonna find that are playing Monster Hunter every lunch every day. 
Yeah. <clears throat> I've been really like, to get into Monster Hunter. They, it's it's fun. It's crazy, but it like I didn't like it at first. It's hard to get into, but it's it's crack. One of those games once you get going, <laughs> yeah. you should figure it out. Yeah. We're gonna be playing a Diablo three still, like using that to make money to I don't know, just because I can and it's fun. Uh <clears throat> been playing Dishonored, uh a little bit into that and just got Assassin's Creed, but or, yeah, the three but I mean, I have a horrible backlog of games that I don't know when I'm going to get to it. Hopefully, sooner rather than later. It's your uh, pile of shame. Yeah. Steam. And uh, I just got this today. I don't know if you can see it. The uh, Sony of the Enders HD. Oh, oh yes. yes. <laughs> I remember when that first came out on the PS2. Those particle effects were like, what? <laughs> yeah, they had yeah that and I think uh, one and two are on there and they're up res. It's I played it oh, at yeah. E3 and it was amazing. So. I'm super, super, super excited to play it again. It's got the Static X soundtrack. Although yeah. they changed it right for the re-release. They couldn't Did get they? the license again. I believe oh, so. Sad. <laughs> Gosh, shucks. Remember, remember back when all these rock and roll bands were doing songs for games, man? That was cool. Yeah. When did that stop? Because everybody knows game industry is making all the money, and no one's making money in music. There's probably tons of bands doing stuff, and I'm just totally neglecting the facts. I did find a... At the the what's the latest Riddick game? I can't I can't remember the name of it. The uh, one on that 360. I can't remember the name. But in the credits, there's some uh, some metal band did a song in the credits, and after I beat the game, I was like, "Holy crap, that's an amazing song!" And yeah. I, uh, I'm trying to let me see if I can find them. I, I went out went to iTunes and like bought it right then. It's like this is amazing. They only have four four tracks. Valley of the Dead. That's who they are. Nice. But, yeah. Yeah, music is pretty important to me, so I'm trying to make sure that we're going to have a pretty awesome soundtrack, all metal, um, <laughs> for our game. Let's see here. What are we doing? Oh, sorry. Dead air. <laughs> <laughs> Dead air. My bad. I thought Jesse had something, but he did. No, cool. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I'm just, uh, just metal. Yeah. <laughs> I love metal songs in games. They're the best. Well, I just love soundtracks in general. Just uh, having a good soundtrack just really adds so much to the game. And, and you're right. It's like yeah. uh, there's a lot of games nowadays that just kind of uh, make it an afterthought. I don't like that. There's this thing I've been hearing. Um, I've been playing a little bit more Skyrim recently just because those two uh, DLCs came out. So I wanted to check them out. And I've also noticed that, that Steam Workshop, Jesus, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. There's hundreds, what, thousands of mods for Skyrim on there, and you can just browse them and just click subscribe, and then when you play, you're, it's installed. That's, it's like, yeah. Ah. Like, yeah I know I'm, they're doing that with Torchlight 2 as well. That's, I'm super yeah. stoked for that. We, we were yeah. super lucky we got that with our game Nexus. Oh, right, so we yeah. Were able to, people were able to bleh, release their own what? levels. Cool. That was dope. I mean, And, you know, thinking back to the old mod days, like, is this Steam Workshop stuff and the way modding is today, does that, that blow your mind how easy that is? Yeah. Like modding yeah, yeah. back in the days, you had to know how to open packages and install files. You still have to do, you know, you can still do that today. You can still mm -hmm. manually install a mod into Skyrim, but you could just click a button and then play the game. Yeah, it took me two days to play Daisy for the first time just because of yeah. the install scheme for that. I was just... I don't know why it just broke my brain. I had to find a YouTube video to help me. I do that nowadays. Anyway, you, you, you go to some, oh God, how do I fucking do this? I mean, YouTube. And he's just like a kid. He's like, okay, to install this game. You need it. Oh man, this guy knows how to do it. Yeah, he I figured it out. He... I, I do that for modding my phone. And it's usually like some 14, 15 year old kid doing a walkthrough on how to install Cyanogen mod and stuff. I'm just like, ah, oh, this is so bad. I think one of the last times I looked up a tutorial, it was literally a, I got, I don't know, I don't know, probably somewhere between eight and twelve year old girl doing the tutorial. <laughs> I don't mean like uh, I didn't awesome. know it had a video of her showing how to do this trick. I was like, what? <laughs> Why am I? God. Uh, but that, oh well. hey, that's the power of the internet, man. Y yeah. You learned something from a kid today. <laughs> And yeah. not about the human condition. How to get yeah. your iPhone to work. <laughs> I was I was teaching myself CSS three and, and HTML five and a majority again were, were from kids. Mm. So, yeah. I feel so bad. 
Are there some good videos on that? I just I usually just search the W three schools. Uh, for for CSS three and all that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I learned I learned enough to <laughs> to put together my website and stuff using CSS three. Oh. And if I really really had the patience and really had the time to really sit down and scour YouTube, I could probably learn all the more um, uh, complex uh, coding stuff if I really wanted to. But I learned enough to <laughs> to do exactly what I needed to do. Cool. To tell you, man, save save your money, man. Just just go to YouTube. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. You find or you find a community that has somebody somebody's already documented a bunch of links. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's the best. It sucks when you're trying to find something some good info on on YouTube or any site, and it's oh this oh here's the video I'm looking for. You click on it, it has a ton of dislikes. You're like oh no. <laughs> And it's just their desktop and them talking about nothing for a minute. <laughs> like, why did you have to, why couldn't you edit this down to the one minute it should be? Yeah. I wanted to organize my desktop icons, but uh, I don't know. I like to think. Yeah. So what, what, are, what are you guys doing? These days? Yeah, I'm playing these <laughs> games. Before we get to this tutorial, I'd like to remind you to like and favorite this video. Subscribe, and <laughs> comment. It really helps me out. Yeah. Really? Is that how YouTube works? I, yeah, I didn't I know. I guess it is. <laughs> If you click on all the annotations that are covering the screen right now. <laughs> yeah, I love playing games. Like, I think I, I've been playing more PC games lately at home. Like, I I just got a Skyrim on my PC. Or I, since I got this new video card, I needed to flex its muscles. So I downloaded Skyrim and bought Skyrim and been playing on Steam. And I haven't uh, gotten too far into the new D- DLC stuff, but. Man, like playing games on the PC is, is crazy. It's awesome. I got Dark Souls on the PC, so I'm now going to try to get 100% on the PC and got it to up res from their crazy low res. And... I always like that stupid little meme that has all the pictures. It's like a Xbox, and a PlayStation. It shows like different levels of handguns and stuff. And then it says PC yeah. and it shows like an Apache helicopter. <laughs> <or something. laughs> It yeah, really awesome. does kind of feel that way with all the stuff you can do. If it's, like I said, with Skyrim, if you got Skyrim, you can jump on those mods that like beautify it, or you can like, download mm-hmm. the, the high res texture pack that they released from Bethesda. It's yeah. like, geez, like this is stuff that I mean, uh, I'm sure both of you guys have had a fair share of console development. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what it's like when I, okay, now we got to make all these textures fit into this much memory. Yeah, and it's like, oh man, there goes everything. Yep. Mip, 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 mip. Yeah. Boy. Uh, we, uh, we planned it for this uh, size of texture, but it turns out the game doesn't run. <laughs> um, and we're just going to hit textures first because we don't know anything yeah. about tech. Mm, cry. Yeah. Poor textures. <clears throat> Environments always get it, too, before characters. That's yeah. the one thing that kind of pisses me off. I'm like, do we really need the 2048s on the characters' heads? <laughs> oh, yes, 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 we do. Uh, cut all the texture space from environments. Let's, let's, let's cut the space from 90% of the screen and yeah. put it on the 10% or less. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm a character artist at heart. Well, I am a character artist. It's just I know when, when we're ripping off the environment guys. I'll fight for the environment guys too sometimes where I'm like, no, we really should, um, you know, think about what the character, what the players seen in this game. You know, it's mostly environment. Don't really need five twelves for eyes or anything like that. <laughs> but you're going to get so close. What if it covers the whole screen and someone's running at 1080p? It's all the 1080p's. That's a <laughs> lot of P's, man. Yeah. Wasn't there a 2048i in WayWow one day? Um, I know I run I run higher than 1080p on on my current monitors. I hate 1080p. It's like the worst thing that happened to LCD monitors. Uh, I think I, I saw some TVs were coming out with uh, 2560 or I can't remember the next bump yeah, up that, 1080. Yeah, that's what I have right now, 2560s, and uh, of course you know 4Ks um, <laughs> looming in the distance here. Yeah, that'd be pretty nice. Hey, so. Um, did you guys get hit by the storm over there? Kind of. Uh, you we the- were actually right outside the clutches of the hurricane in the week past weekends. I mean, we, we got rained on the past two or three days. And, yeah. You get the uh, rain, so but it's mostly north. Yeah, there's not a lot of water. I mean, the coast, like if you go like 30 miles east of Raleigh, there's there's a lot of uh, 
there's more damage and stuff there when you get out to the actual coast yeah. there's a lot of bad stuff happening and, yeah i was gonna add i grew up in that area and so i know all about the hurricane cycles in the way they would they never really we've never really had one well, i mean maybe years ago but they never yeah. really just come like straight shot into the yeah. into the states because once they do they just lose so much power they usually kind of whip up and out mm -hmm. and this one was particularly devastating to the north yeah. i don't know if you guys saw any of the uh, west virginia images where they had a like a, a big snowstorm that was coming in too and it mm -hmm. hit the hurricane at the same time so there's these crazy pictures you can find on a uh, weather.com and mm -hmm. uh, they, they show like just massive amounts of snow and just nastiness out in west virginia mm -hmm. which is like well probably not massive it's just a just a gross nasty snow yeah the the Atlantic City and New York City stuff is really depressing. Like seeing yeah, all that it sucks. The flooding destruction. Yeah. And what was that 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 um the boardwalk that has the whole theme park on it sunk into the ocean? Like the whole mm -hmm. roller coaster in the ocean picture. You got to see that. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Coney Island. Yeah, that's it. I was gonna say Coney Island, but I was I <laughs> thought I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, the it's pretty crazy. There's a ton of water up there. I I my backyard flooded today, but I don't think it was from the storm, and so. I mean, I was dealing with that all day. It was, it's just ironic that, it, like, I was talking to some guys up in Maryland, and like, man, there's all this water in my backyard. I'm like, wait a second. Hey, I forgot to ask. <laughs> I forgot to ask my Bethesda friends how they're doing. They're all dead. Yeah, because that's that that got a they got hit pretty hard. No, I didn't know from one of them, but I did email them today. I'm from uh, South Texas, so dealing with hurricanes is something I deal with yearly, and we get hit with some pretty hard ones, but I guess we're just well prepared because it's like a normal thing. So every time I hear, oh, there's a hurricane coming, everyone's panicking, I'm just kind of like, yeah, whatever. But then I, I fail to realize that that a lot of these places just aren't prepared mm -hmm. like you know, for this. Not, not It's not like a yearly thing. That, I, mean, right. I grew up, you know, three hurricanes a year, you know, if, if it was a, a, a good year and it was – we're, but we're used to it. We're we're prepared. Yeah. We we know how to board up our windows properly, and we, all our houses are up on bricks and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it's just it's just kind of surreal when I really see all those images of what's going on. It's like shit, man. That's that's insane. Yeah. Well, it's like for Florida. You know, a lot of Florida was like, it's just a category one. What are you guys worried about? But <laughs> yeah. we have to remember, like, okay, New York. Most of New York didn't exist. It's a lot of that's man made, like built out into the ocean land. And they put buildings on it and built yeah. like a, a ton of uh, subterranean infrastructure, as in the whole subway, yeah. which you can find images of a flooded. So when you have this thing that shouldn't even exist, the ocean's like, ah, oh, fuck you, I'm coming in. I, I'm water. You're not going to yeah. stop me. It's not yeah, happening. I mean, it's just like what happened in Louisiana all those years ago. I mean, that city is below sea level. Exactly. Yeah, we were uh, we were kind of prepared for stuff to happen. My wife has uh, lived in Florida for a couple of years, so and she was there, I think, in like ninety uh, or like two thousand three, four time, and I think there was a big hurricane. I can't remember the exact time frame, but she was out of power and water for at least a month. And a month? Has a, yeah, it has a we have a generator that she got then, so we have a generator and we had plenty of water stocked up in case something happened here. So. Being prepared That's is intense, too. man. I've, I I kind of grew up in the mountains, and one time we had a, a wicked snow. We had a wicked snow, and we were we were with, uh, over a week without power, and it's pretty brutal. I mean, we yeah. luckily because we, you know we grew up in the mountains, we had a chimney, and a fireplace, and a lot of wood yeah. chops, and we were we were able to stay warm by everybody instead of uh, even going into or staying in our rooms. We just all stayed in the living room where the fireplace was, and it was yeah, fine. stay warm all yeah. around it. Yeah. It's kind of cool, kind of cozy. It's neat. It was yeah. a good. Ex I think it was a good experience to have as a child. Because yeah. guess what? It, it, it can all stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I guess it's like me. I don't know how to prepare for snow. So if we had like a, you know, a couple inches of snow, everyone's, you know, freaking out and doesn't <laughs> don't know how to drive in snow and all that stuff. Yeah. Candles. You know, here, you know, in Texas, if there's you know a couple inches of snow, it basically works shut down we're like all right snow day and it's yeah. two inches of snow out here in denver it, it's a f few inches of snow i'm like i'm still biking <laughs> somebody's already scraped the path before i even wake up 
Yeah, I could ride the tire slush. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, I got hurricanes down. That's that's my thing. Cool. Yeah, we, mm-hmm. we we occasionally get a lot of uh, snow out here. Like two years ago, we got a ton of snow, but there hasn't really been. North Carolina's kind of hit or miss with crazy weather. But yeah, that that whole area, you, you, a, you could go through a whole winter and not even see snow. Yeah. Or yeah. you could have one of those ones where it just decides to dump. Oh, it's waist deep every yeah. one, every ten years or so, maybe. I don't yeah. know. Just throwing out a number because I've seen it a, a few times. It's beautiful here. I, I love it. It's very green. Yeah. All the woods out there in the Carolinas, yeah. man. And you get the you, you yeah. get the mountains. You're uh, one of the cool things about the Carolinas is even though the people are dumb as shit, um, <laughs> you what are you right. You're right there with access to mountains and access to beach. Mm-hmm. And, and everything in between is kind of beautiful. It's mostly yeah. woods. Yeah. Hour and a half to Boone County, two hour, or maybe it's like three hours to Boone. And that's like some of the mountains. And then it's maybe three hours to the Outer Banks. And I don't know. It's beautiful. You've got Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach. Yeah. And the only reason, <laughs> I, can, I, the only reason I can trash talk the Carolinas is because I said I grew up there. So <laughs> yeah. we, we're, we're, we're on a good repertoire. And they're all like, ah, <laughs> you know we are. <laughs> Was barbecue? Yeah, I grew up in Ohio, so it's, coming out here was like a different world. Like, hills and tons of trees everywhere, and an ocean close by. What? This is tropical. Get pretty cold in Ohio. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Ohio. Mm-hmm. The only thing there was Drew Carey. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know much about Ohio. Terry Springer. There we go. Is that where he's from? Wasn't he yeah, a so mayor? Cincinnati. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's right. You guys have Cincinnati. Yeah. Huh. WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> yep. There's, a, there's another reference show. even people who knew about the modding shit will not get. It's too old. <laughs> yeah. WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> Google it. Yeah. I used to watch you will be disappointed. Yeah, you will. Although it's a very catchy theme song. Oh yeah, I, I feel like any old sitcom just doesn't hold up. How could it? <clears throat> Married with Children kind of does, but not not a whole lot. That shows yeah. challenging to watch. <laughs> a lot of those old ones are just good time. Yeah. <laughs> the great segue out of hurricane destruction talk. Yeah. <laughs> Is uh well, I mean, you know, people that tune into to the Crunchcast, they really want to know about the weather. Yeah. yeah. Hey, could you guys talk about the weather right now? I mean, you know, <laughs> what's it like outside of your house right now? <laughs> Can you guys sing some shitty theme songs? Yeah. <laughs> Waste my time for the next, uh, I don't know, five ten, and get back to some shit. Yeah. All right, so. Talk to us more about environments. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you could talk to us about, but yeah. talk to us about it. Feel hey, like two hours check worth. Check this of out. Air. <laughs> so I know we kind of talked about it before the whole mod scene, and that's kind of how we all came up, I guess. Mm-hmm. What if, what advice would you give to anyone today? Because I mean, now you have all these schools, but I'm sure. I mean, because of you know, I, I feel like we probably would all kind of agree that you don't need it as long as. You're yeah, out I'm, there. I'm kind of on the fence of needing it or not. Right. Uh, I think There's benefits, yeah. right? Yeah. The, especially going to the right place. But anyway, yeah. yeah. What, what do you think? Uh, just uh, for people modding right now or working on game art or in school. Let's right? just say in general, the advice you would give to someone who wanted to get into games. Like said, okay, what right. would you do today? Because now you do have a lot of good school options. But still yeah. modding is still so strong and, and even you know, stronger than ever, but possibly harder to stand out. Because it's so yeah. strong with Steam Workshop and stuff like that. Anyway, your turn. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it comes down to just a lot, just doing art a lot. Like I know, like I know about like getting art depressions and that your work isn't good. And I and I guess the biggest thing I could say is just never to get stuck in that um, something may not work. And being able for you as an artist, being able to see that is a good quality and not a bad quality. Like, if you can look at something and say you don't like it, then that's awesome. But always just make stuff and play games and love games. But don't play games too much. Like I think there's a fine line between playing a game to research it and look at the art and like 
get excited by the art and say, hey, I want to make something that would fit into this game. And being able to do that is, I think, uh, really awesome. I think it's a great, a great thing to do in a practice because ultimately, like, if you want to work in games and be in games, the games that you're playing right now, your art has to look like that, if not better. And if uh, you work hard and, like, if you look at your stuff and it doesn't quite compare, then you just keep working on it, keep keep practicing, never quit. Um, never give yeah. up. Follow your dreams. Never give up. Never <laughs> surrender. <laughs> yeah, like, I think... I think Skyrim and Torchlight and uh, a lot of the other games that and, like just that allow modding now and easy modding. Like StarCraft not, Two. Yeah. Like even if it's not easy, like just do it. Like uh, like I love Bayonetta. And, like what would if I wanted to make a thing that was a creature in Bayonetta? Like I would just practice and do it and try to make it look. And maybe it's never going to go anywhere. Maybe it'll just sit on my hard drive or I'll post it online or I guess this is hypothetical, but like, I think that's the kind of thing I would suggest. Like if you are really passionate about something, like just follow it and just keep doing it and make art. And also, I guess in addition to just doing art a lot and getting inspired by the things that you love, um, talking to people and getting to know people is a, a, a huge deal. Like just, Either whether it's posting on Polycount, chatting with somebody on, is IRC still around? Do the kids still yeah. use that program? <laughs> I still it's use actually, IRC. Yeah, it's actually not, it's still people still use it. Yeah. 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 Chat with people on there, uh, AIM, Facebook, whatever. Like get to know people and get have personal relationships with people, not just like, hey, look at my art and isn't it awesome? Don't you want to praise me? Like that that yep. kind of stuff is nice and it's good to have, I guess, to boost your ego. But he's your ego using really, me. Oh. Yeah. In the end, like the ego is not important. It's like I think to me, it's about like connecting with people and uh, getting advice from people and working with people. And tying in with that, I think the the last major thing I could maybe think of is don't be a dick. <laughs> like, like, yeah, be nice to people. Like you don't like people love the same things that you love, and there's no reason to troll people um, about saying their work is terrible. Like if you give. I, like, I guess that falls into being able to take and receive critiques. Like, or it's just someone gives you a critique, you're not gonna, be, you shouldn't blast them in the face and be like, "How dare you? This is, this is That's my what I do. It's quality been art for me." Yeah. <laughs> but also, like being able to talk to people about your, about their art and being able to deliver um, comments that aren't like completely rude and. Or, or, or you know what's really, sucks. you know what someone's you know what sucks when someone's like. Oh, that's great. <laughs> right. Silence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. Thank yeah. you. Being able to talk about the stuff that you love, I think, is very important. Um, I don't know. Never so, stop learning. I would say, uh, in summary, you're saying, you know, always want more of yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah, you could never never say, like, I made some art, and be like, I'm the best now. Mm, fuck you. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. Everybody else. I'm the number one. Yeah, humility that, goes a long way. That whole, I always, like I said, and I think we we actually talked about it earlier. When I'm like, hey, look at my portfolio. That sucks. Uh, <laughs> that idea that it's like, God, why is this still not great? Why is it? Why could it be better? Like, ah, here we mm -hmm. go. Uh, and your other one was that you said, okay, mod. Yes. People got to fucking mod games. Look, and you got to play games mm -hmm. that are out there. You got to know, especially to say, okay, if you want to make like you know, pixel art stuff like that you should be playing those types of games and, like, yeah. and the latest of the latest and you know all the mobile you know stuff that's on phone stuff that's on the ds all that crap yeah but you get inspired by it like yeah you, but if you want to yeah. make like you know next hard, next gen hard surface you should definitely be playing all the latest greatest looking games that come out just for the inspiration alone yeah uh but, i mean you don't have to go as hardcore as like to learn all the oh yeah you don't mechanics no, yeah. and like you don't have to get good at any game. It's it's just a matter. I just meant of like, like a, yeah, you know what I like to do, and and I've I've had a lot of fellow artists agree with me on this, is we'll put the game on easy and just kind of mm -hmm. blow through it, like the easiest difficulty, yeah. or just find a cheat code and just cut it on, just just like stop and just I'm just looking at this wall. I'm not fighting yeah. these guys right now. I'll play a game. I'm just looking at this wall. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that so much of games that that are games like a oh shit I can't even think of any now. I'll just say Bioshock. 
<laughs> because that's one of the games where I love actually playing the game. Like I love jacking up the difficulty and enjoying the game, but also like just like cheat my way through and just kind of look at some stuff every now and again. Mm-hmm. And that's by what, that I mean like a few years back when Bioshock came out. <laughs> that's what happened with me at Bayonetta. Like I I got Bayonetta and they had like the easy mode where you could just push one button and kind of cruise through it. So I just wanted to see the art and the designs because I thought they were really yeah. crazy and cool. And then. Midway through, I got bored just pressing one button, so I started ratcheting up the de- the, the uh, damage and, or difficulty until I like was on the hardest difficulty, and I realized I had been playing it for four weeks straight. Yeah, I found myself doing that with Skyrim, where I I started actually just modeling stuff from the game, like yeah. putting it in a, putting it in UDK, <laughs> and it's just for fun. Awesome. But then I'm like, okay, I need to make this game super difficult, and downloaded some mod that made it retard hard. It's, it's yeah, like, man. <laughs> so I guess your your next point was basically make friends, get out there in the community, network. Yeah. Very yep. muy yeah. importante, you know. And, and again, we, we kind of chimed in on this earlier, but when you're working at a certain studio, if you're at a larger studio and you're surrounded by really good artists, you can learn so much more just because of the caliber of talent around you. Mm-hmm. And I've also heard this concept that you're, you are an average of your five top friends. Right. And so if if you've got a few shitheads in there, <laughs> maybe you can filter them out. Maybe the you other. could filter them oh, out with somebody who has a skill. Oh, three people <laughs> has a skill you want to learn or something. Yeah, and and, and like you said, yeah. maybe maybe if you are that shithead, yeah, you shouldn't follow uh, Maury's uh, fourth point of don't be a dick. <laughs> you gotta you gotta you gotta not be a dick. And I yeah, I like to be a dick sometimes, but just just to be funny. There's a time and a place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's called college. Yes. <laughs> they see me draw But no, yeah. sounds, like a, sounds like a good set of points that uh, I've heard plenty of times before. And and and, and the reason is because they're relevant. They're accurate. So what do you think? I'll always push uh, networking and, you know, it's it's great to, to be in love with your art and make art nonstop, but it is very important to get out and talk to your peers and, and get to know the people around you, especially in like your artist community, your local communities, just because those are the people that, you know, if you become friends, you guys could work together, you know, there'll be future co-employees, you know, the, mm-hmm. it's just, yes. you can't, you can't ignore the social aspect to, to our industry. Yeah. The communication and what, what we've had it we've said it so many times. The industry is so small. Yeah, there's been guys that I've worked with multiple times. Actually, just recently, we hired a guy who's a programmer that I worked with ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. In the same state, even though since then, whoa, whoa, <laughs> someone was spotted. I was seen. Oh god, sorry, that was my. I guess got a text. <laughs> that's some. That's some. That's what gamers phones sound like things happen <laughs> I I keep love it here. it's not bad you, you know like if, if it's like some default sound like some default ass ringtone i'm like hey fuck you asshole cut off your phone but if it's yeah. like a game sound like there's one i hear at work every now and again it's like the um the coin pickup sound in super mario brothers like that yeah. Yeah. i'm like oh somebody got a coin <laughs> it's really an email yeah, yeah. Uh, mine's the uh the super mario uh world intro that's my ringtone it's an amazing ringtone. Love that thing. My ringtone is Tim and Eric singing a made-up theme song for Kentucky Fried Chicken or KFC. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> and I've had it as my ringtone for a five, six years. <laughs> yeah. Such an asshole. But uh, yeah, you were talking about the communication thing. It's that's yeah. that's just so important. And like I said, ten years ago. Now I'm working with this guy again, and all of a sudden, we're, and we lost our train of thought. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's happened, like I said, so many times. But he, he's, so far, he's won the award for longest between working with and working with again. Hmm. And it's crazy, man. And yeah. even all the, the, the guys that we've been hiring recently, they're like, oh, you worked with so-and-so back here. Oh, yeah, I worked mm-hmm. with him. And it's, it's, it always is like that. So yeah, be careful. It's good. Yeah. Small industry. Yeah, one thing, uh, one thing I've noticed, I guess, with, I guess, people sharing their work online, and I guess, not just with Polycom, but with uh, some of the other forums, and just, just in general, that it's become more of a look at, look at my art and talk about my art, or let me talk to you about my art, or whatever. Just give me feedback, and where I, 
I don't want to be the old man and say back in the day, but I mean, I think maybe there's like, some merit to like sharing work and stuff now, like people releasing like an environment saying, Hey, I need this texture. Here's, here's a bridge. Someone textured my bridge and here's a, like I need tiling textures for my scene. Like, I guess, it seems like there's a lot of cooperation that's forced, not forced, but just kind of like planning to cooperate and not just like straight up, hey, I need some help from somebody. Can yeah, somebody do this? Like kind of like an SDK, but more specific. Yeah, like like that kind of stuff really builds uh, relationships and people with between people. They're like, hey, you made these awesome textures back in the day, and like I just got a job, and we need a texture guy. Hey, yeah. all right. No, absolutely. I, I have seen that work. I've seen that directly happen more yeah. than once. Like, yes. Uh, you know, it, shit, just recently I released a UDK level. It was like I released all the source art, and then some guy just replied, uh, Stromberg, I think that's it, like Stromberg9, he just replied to my thread with a, a, a few screenshots of a level he was building with those. I was like, that is awesome. cool. Yeah. That's so cool. And he was using the assets in a way I would have never thought. So I just kind of had this plan in mind <laughs> of what the level was going to look like. So I built the yeah. assets around that. Whereas he just took the assets and just kind of ran with them to see what we can yeah. do. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Sorry. You all right over there? Yeah, that's One mountain just got attacked by a bear. Really? Yeah. Attacked by a moose. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's always uh, cool yeah. the way you can do that. You do a little collab, then you remember somebody. Yeah. It makes them memorable or whatever. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think when we were talking about the stuff that we had done way, like a long time ago, one of the... I think where I got the most texture in practice was working on a mod for Unreal Tournament Weapons Factory. And it was really crazy in that when I started working at Science Studios, the, like a little bit into it, we hired a, a programmer that he and I were working together closely on working on the HUD, the animated HUD. And he and I were talking about like, how'd you get your start? What do you do? You work on mods. I'm like, yeah, I did this mod. And he's like, really? I worked on that mod. And it turns out that <laughs> he was one of the programmers on the mod and like, I had no idea. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, the same nice. thing happens so many times. Yeah, you run into the <laughs> same people, man. Yeah. I remember some modders from back in the day, and all of a sudden I'm, I, I'm hanging out with them at GDC last year, and they're like, hey, here's our company, and here's our games we're working on. It's like, God, mm -hmm. you just never know what's going to happen with some people. Yeah, I'd never been to GDC until this past year. Like, I just somehow had never gone, and it was amazing. And I think for getting to network and know people and – I guess meet people. GDC is an amazing spot, amazing place for that. Yeah, this will be my first year going. I've never been myself. Uh, you're going in 2013? Uh, yes. Weird. I should be there, but unconfirmed until I'm actually there. And that's what I always say about every show. Yeah. Uh, generally, it was for uh, any shows that I've been to in the past was sheer leisure. And that's why I went to, to Tokyo so many times because, well, if I'm going to spend my money going to a trade show, I might as well go to fucking Tokyo. And uh, now now it's going to be for my studio and stuff like that. you got to take care of priorities. Yeah, you're actually running the show now. Are you guys going to have a little booth set up or something? Uh, no, probably not a GDC. We're, we're looking at PAX if they'll ever get back to us on that. So we'll see. Yeah, you, you know, you don't really, I don't know. You don't really need a booth, I guess, at like a GDC because it's more of a, but it's a game developer conference. It's, it's just for developers for the most part. There's some yeah. press and stuff that get in there too. But we, like with a PAX, man, when you got public and they can see your mm -hmm. product, oh, that's so worth it. Yeah. yeah. Those, any of those public shows, that's where you want to spend the money. At PAX or like GDC, you don't even have to buy a ticket. You just <laughs> go there and hang out with people at parties and after shows, schedule lunches, shit like that. Yeah. Actually, after after this, I'll need to talk to you, Chris, about uh, PAX, because you guys did do PAX, right? And we did. We had an amazing uh, booth right next to Bethesda. Listen to that to, goddamn Brink video loop all day. Just trying to get some, <laughs> some price estimates on, on booths, and maybe you can get me some of that information. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that later. All right. Yeah, I'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> have it, have it, have it. Have it, have it, have it. Offline shit. <laughs> yeah, no problem, no problem, bro. So yeah, so that was your first GDC. Do you like to go to any of those shows more, or you ever get to many? Or, or actually, let me ask you this: Does Epic ever just send you to them, or are you one of their boys like to send out? Because I know I've met uh, Jordan and a few other yeah. Epic guys plenty of times. Yeah, for uh, E3, I was actually sent out for Infinity Blade Dungeons. Um, it's kind of last minute where we needed a, a 
there were some people who were their time was going to be taken up by. Were you a booth babe? About, I was a booth babe. Nice, was, nice. Oh, that's hard on the knees and back. I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> it really, it really got my uh, hips. I don't know what it was. It's just that thong was just too tight. Oh, yeah. The, uh, some people are going to be tied up doing Gears of War Judgment interviews, so they needed someone to do uh, like demo uh, Infinity to Play Dungeons, and I had been working on it for quite a while, so I uh, went out and did that. And I think that was the first E3 I've been to since 2005, I think, or 2004. I haven't been to an E3 since 1999. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been. That's awesome. uh, I did get I did uh, asked to go to GDC last year, and. Um, it, it, that was my first time I ever went. And I was like, I want to go. It sounds cool. And it was. It was awesome. Oh, yeah, they were a great not, time. I'm not uh, usually going and doing demos, engine demos and stuff. Um, I primarily went to GDC to go to sessions and talk and see yeah. old people. I usually find myself working booths mm-hmm. for a long extended amount of times. But yeah, no, That's uh, what GDC is that Polycount meetup. I don't know if you went to that last year. That's a yeah, great thing to go to. So. Yeah, that was awesome. I think I... I was having uh, dinner with someone that uh, I ended up going early and then leaving and coming back like super late. And That's right. I think late. I remember that time because it, when we showed up, they're like, "Oh, the Epic guys just left." But then a bunch of guys <laughs> showed up later, so we might have we might have met up for like a second and then forgot because I, I was you know, probably drunk at that point. Yeah, I think Mike Kimes stayed there for most of the night. Uh, yeah. He, yeah, I mean, it's awesome beer. Yeah, 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 yeah dude. Exactly. <laughs> well, he, I got I talked to him for so long. <laughs> that beard is a monster it's like geez you, you don't even need to wear a shirt <laughs> that's amazing that is an epic beard yeah and for those who don't know he's got a big beard mm. <laughs> uh, I love going to those shows uh, E3 was I think E3 is one of those things where it's great to go the first two days but by the third day you're like alright I've seen everything but I still want to walk around aimlessly and go deaf from the loud music but yeah. uh, E3 is still awesome to go see all the fun stuff and play some cool games and... like I said it seems like the, like I said the first few days you know, you, that first day or so you, you get it all figured out you've seen it all for yeah. the most part unless it's CES and then you'll never yeah. see it all in a lifetime <laughs> but it's uh, like I said it seems like the after the show it is so much more of the show like mm-hmm. just hanging out with people afterwards, like I said, going to like not actually being on the floor. So much mm-hmm. more seems like when I like last year at GDC, I was just out walking around and ran into more people that I knew. Yeah. But and that's just because I was just working a booth, and what's the chances whoever is going to walk by you? Right. Yeah. Or they walk in the streets, run into a ton of people. Like, exactly. Go to parties. And... Yeah. As a as a dev now, like a studio dev, I probably will never buy another GDC uh, ticket again because all the meetings that we had were outside of GDC. So I was like, wow, this is kind of pointless. So unless I actually want to go on the floor, there's really no reason for, for someone like me to actually get up there and pay the money for it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's really expensive, man. Yeah, yeah it is. Especially if you're just trying to do it as a casual thing. Yeah, you get mm-hmm. trying to get a booth or something, man. You get a nice little corner. Or especially if you're doing it as a leisure thing. Like I said, at that point, just save your money and go, you know, overseas or go to Gamescom or go to TGS. TGS, the ticket to get into TGS is ten bucks. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, ten bucks and a business card just to prove you're a developer or press. Sorry, and then where you get is in. A TGS? Oh, Tokyo Game Show. Sorry. Tokyo, yeah. Yeah, ten bucks. Oh yeah. Shit. Yes. How much is a plane ticket over there? Actually, I heard they were pretty cheap. Yeah, I mean, I, the and cheapest wait. I ever went, the cheapest I ever uh, flew round trip was seven hundred and sixty-five dollars total after tax. Oh, that's pretty cheap. Um, and the most I've ever paid was twelve hundred. But then when you compare that to to some of the passes for like GDC and stuff, you're already spending you know a thousand dollars or so on on some of the passes. Well, when I compare that to dom- some domestic flights, I've had to pay for. Yeah. Honestly. Flying from Raleigh to Charlotte, like I remember looking at the flight for that, and it was like that's three and a half hours driving. That a fl- that cost like seven hundred dollars or six hundred dollars. Yeah, ridiculous. So that's why it never made sense to go to any of these uh, the domestic trade shows. I might as well just save my money and go somewhere awesome. <laughs> you know, it's those kind of cool. numbers that really show you that they are bullshitting all their prices <laughs> on everything. Yeah, oh, I think I, I think I saw a meme recently that showed that. 
when the the the, the seven forty seven hauling the space shuttle. Yeah. And it said, "Wait a minute, this thing can carry the space shuttle. I, mean, I have to pay extra for carry ons. Bullshit." <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, screw that shit. I hate that. Now I'm getting scared because we're gonna have to be taking, um, you know, uh, things to set up your booth and stuff. So that's gonna cost a lot of money now. Ugh. Yeah, those roadie cases and stuff. Yeah, because yeah, once once you pass a certain weight limit, you have to start paying extra and stuff like that. Oh yeah, and yeah. something gets damaged and drip. And actually, I think I'm not sure which all the shows, but a lot of those trade shows are union controlled. And you can't set up your own stuff. You have to pay the union guys to ship it in and set it up. Oh, that's crap. Yeah. But if you can, if you can sneak it by, <laughs> that's the trick. Try to sneak it by. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you had an unlimited amount of money, what would be your dream game? Like if someone was like, here's, a, you know, a hundred million, 150 million or whatever million dollars, uh, you know, million, what would billion. You do? million billion dollars. Huh. Man, I don't know. I, uh, I think one of the things that is great about Epic and I love that I love the games that we make. And I think if, if, if it was my project, like it was, some fantasy in the future I was off on my own and I got that money I, I would try to find a way to make a game that like, had the same like level of appeal and fun that Monster Hunter does but figuring out a way to make it new and fresh but like, and accessible for everyone to, for a lot of people to play like uh, I imagine if this was like 10 years in the future, we'd all be doing crazy, super normal laughs or whatever. But I think doing something that was completely painted and truly like artistic on every level. Um, yeah. I mean, not, not, that's not to say that high poly and normal map stuff isn't artistic. I think it's, it's incredibly artistic, but I think doing painted stuff to, to make it mimic 2d, um, but look, I don't know. I just have a certain look. Like I love, the Diablo three textures and like some the, the stuff in Diablo three like blows my mind like like I think the textures in that game are the same level of like excitement I get the same level of excitement looking at them as I did looking at the Quake three skins where it's just like yeah. fuck this is awesome um, yeah. and like it, figuring out a way to do those that skins and, changed everything yeah yeah. See, I, I love I love hearing stuff like that from people who are especially known for doing the the really high end three D stuff. I just I just it's almost like a justification for the way I feel about art uh, in general. Where I, you know I, I love art, I love technical art and all that stuff. But for me, I I just love painting and and uh, you know getting right back down to to the roots of things. Mm -hmm. I guess. Um, you know, yeah, we all came from from the Quake three days and all that, and that was just bliss. Like, I wish, I wish we could have stayed in that era of gaming for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it just kind of passed us by as soon as you know everyone was like, "Normal maps, what paint? Who paints yeah. textures nowadays?" You know, I yeah. hate that shit. Yeah, and I mean, I guess side to painting stuff, like it would be awesome to be able to do. Like, I mean, looking at Avatar and looking at uh, some CG movies, like. Have making a game that look that like have that quality of entertainment. I think games is movies is a different subject entirely. Like I don't I don't really feel too comfortable going into, but like uh, I don't know. Like I love like having a lot of design and like like just the pixels and like your, your souls poured over on the pixels. And I think that's uh, like that kind of art is really cool. And I I don't know. I love looking at it and I just I love doing it. Like if I had unlimited money and unlimited Hopefully not in limited time, but <laughs> unlimited time is always bad. Yes. Uh, it, uh, yeah. Yeah, going down to that level of detail would be pretty much the death of me. Yeah. I, I would just hate it so much. Now, that's not to say I don't like looking at it. And if there are <laughs> other developers, there are other developers that are more interested in, in creating games like that. Oh, hell yeah. I'll, I'll play the hell out of them. Yeah. But as from a creator standpoint, I would I would be in total hell making it. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes into the, the like those CG films and like yeah. more than more than you would uh, anticipate. Uh, 
I mean, it, it's just like that. I, I think going from like Unreal Tournament to Unreal Tournament 2003, like thinking of that, like that word, at first you would have like a boxy hallway and then next, like you, you have what? Well, you have static meshes and you can put meshes in the corners and no lo- it's no longer a box. And yeah. now you can do more of that. And eventually it'll be like, okay, well, I have this room and I need like populate every corner and round the corners and make sure everything fits and like it oh, flows. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think doing something to that level of like detail mesh, like mesh complexity and density wise would be awesome. But like painted, cause I'm, there was some piece on Polycon I remember a while ago where like, I love the like painted from the camera angle style textures where you can put it in, put the model in a specific, yeah, uh, I think it was. Uh, there was a few pieces actually. There was some. I think there was some Bastion fan art, and there was a piece with yeah, like a girl, and there was like a kind of yeah. like, uh, like a, a stone grove yeah. kind of area. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. That, if you remember it, you remember it. If not, yes. psh, good luck finding it. Yeah, that uh, that kind of stuff is amazing, and I love that. And like doing that, like having that kind of trick where it's like, is it two D? Is it three D? Yeah, they, is, yeah, no. they did. A, yeah, again, you. Uh, I know you praised Diablo 3's art, and that's kind of the same way as that 2.5D, where you know mm-hmm. the camera is going to be kind of locked in this position, so you can just kind of, you can get away with painting things in. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Really getting specific, like, oh, this this whole angle here is completely com- a composed painting by an artist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what I love about working on a brawler. I don't have to worry about, you know, people rotating the camera around my pieces of art like a jackass and <laughs> examining it from every corner. I could just make it look good from this one angle and be oh, done with it. Smoke and mirrors. <laughs> oh, oh, Force yeah. perspective. Oh. Smoke and mirrors is awesome. There's, uh, I mean, it, it, it forces people to be more creative, in my opinion. Uh, from a, from a, I guess not necessarily an artistic standpoint, but from a technical standpoint, you really have to be creative. I mean, if we if we come down to a normal maps, you're just smoke and mirrors too. So, I mean, at some point, you know, Shit, they had to really honestly, right? Yeah, there were there had to have been a meeting where they were all like, "Well, shit, how are we going to make this level of detail?" You know, and someone came up with it, and you know, next thing you know, they wrote it into an engine. Mm-hmm. So. So yeah, I appreciate uh, that kind of stuff for that, but yeah, yeah as long as there are, as long as there are other artists that are interested in in creating it, then I'm fine with that. I'll just stick yeah. to my own style. There was a long time ago we announced the stupid mode of Nexus, but we were waiting from for, for a, a big engine patch to ju- drop before we dropped the game. And I just recently saw an update of like one of my levels of like pretty much all the. DX11 tessellated, activated on everything that I already had, all the displacement maps and everything just ready to go. Mm. It was like, holy crap, look at all that smoke and mirrors. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It was running great, which surprised me. Awesome. It's like, oh, it's running good, thank God. <laughs> yes. Look at my rock, it's all wavy. <laughs> oh, DX11, you're drunk, go home. Ah. <laughs> uh. Smoke and mirrors. I know uh, for Quake Three, we had a character that that when you would kill him, he would split in half. And the way we ended up doing that it was ex- exporting it with two different uh, uh, character studio rigs, uh, and did all the animations with two different character studio rigs. One was from the waist down, the other one was from the waist up, and they were just perfectly synced. So that model was essentially two two different characters that were synced together. Hmm. And when you when you would kill him, he'd dirty split PS2 apart. Shit. Yeah, he would he would fall apart, and the top one would animate crawling on the floor, and the legs would kind of stumble around and walk and fall over and stuff. Awesome. Yeah, yeah that, that that was definitely. Did you release creative. that? Because I think I uh, remember something like yeah, that. Yeah, that that was uh that was Bone Crusher. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I remember that honestly. Yeah, Juan is uh the one that figured all that out. It's pretty neat, man. Oh. Man, I wouldn't. What I wouldn't give to, like I said, man. I I just think we we walked away from that uh, era of gaming a little too quick. I was just got my first job. I wanted to explore and do a little bit more in that in those specs, the PS2 specs. It's amazing. Yeah, I think you can get that now um, with mobile games. I mean, the, to a certain extent, like I, I don't know if it's as accessible, or I don't think the the vibe is the same now, where. Uh, I mean, I think there's a certain stigma with some mobile games uh, that isn't the same as like a PC where like I can get this game and mod it and maybe I can learn from it. Where 
mobile game is a little different, but um, I don't know. I think I think there's a place for it. And I mean, if you look at World of Warcraft, like the game's how old was that game? Like eight years old now, seven years old, and forever, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's there. There's still a lot of hand painted stuff with some cool updated like uh, shaders and things in the world, but I don't. Know, I think yeah, I, I don't know what the deal is well i would say one limitation to that thinking is the fact that like okay back in the days like say you're uh, a developer for a playstation one or playstation mm -hmm. two like those were systems that you knew had so much life behind them and right. you can look at say a, a ps2 gen first generation ps2 game right you know the way those there's there some pretty dope games but the generation two and three games were so much better especially looking at what they did with the Final Fantasy games in real time. Like some of the oh, polygons yeah. and stuff that they were pushing and some of the, the things they were doing were like, it had developers dumbfounded. Was it 12 was the last one on the PS2? Uh, I'm not sure, but I probably have it. Cause I've got them on uh, the yes. Yeah, yes. Anyway, uh, there was some guy, I remember they posted it on Polycount, some guy dumped the ROM. He dumped all the meshes to like a Maya format or something. When people were opening these things going, what the... How do they have this much on the screen? How, how are all these polygons on the screen? And they just, they just figured it out. Yeah, their yeah. tech was so strong, and so that compared with the mobile of today, where the mobile of today is like, oh well, this new phone came out next month. This new phone came out, so there's not a stable yeah. thing for people to really. Okay, we're gonna focus on just this one phone and push that engine to the max it, I feel, yeah, I, that just doesn't seem applicable anymore to the market yeah it, yeah. it, it does change a lot and especially I've noticed that with uh, screen resolutions where the new iPhone 5 is like 13 something and when they're like now there's like a list of 20 different resolutions that yeah and the tech and grows exponentially have to support. so it doesn't grow like it's NES to 16 or to SNES it grows from like some uh, kind of shitty phone to a PC you had last year, to yeah. something even something you, a PC you couldn't have in five years. It's, it's gonna it grows like ridiculous. It's, yeah. How do you plan for that? Yeah. It's, and then, but they're all running the same operating system, and it's it's not like a PS3 comes out and then the or the PS2 comes out. And it's like okay, my PS1 games are just gonna be that much better, but it's like yeah. They all have to work. Like it's like being able to put a PS2 game into your PS1 and expect your PS1 to run it. Yeah. Those assholes need compatibility. <laughs> Man, I wish I would have been making uh, characters when when segmented characters were all the rage. <laughs> Those are the easy days. Shit, I wish, I wish, and then you just Shogo and Blood Two, mm, Burt Keller. <laughs> yeah, Tomb Raider. I mean, N64. I think that that's that was really the the time that I wish I was making games. Oh, man. I, did, I did some PS2 development where I have a screenshot where it's a bunch of weird, funky fungus plants and stuff, and everything is vertex color. There's no oh, yeah. textures at all. And it's, awesome. It was always something that was like, that's pretty neat. It, it, it allows us to do that. Yeah. No, that that's that's awesome stuff, man. Um, I know, like, with the art style that I'm doing for, uh, for Mech Knight, uh, you know, we we're, we are pushing for for lower count characters. Everything's uh, hand painted and all that. But in the back of my head, I know that's not re really a limitation. So it kind of takes away some of the fun of figuring some of that stuff out um, because I, I have no restrictions really on, on stuff. Like right now, this character is only at four thousand six hundred tries, and I'm kind of like, well, if I really needed more tries, I could add some more. But uh, you know. That, that it kind of takes it kind of spoils the fun for me on that level, but I, I'm a weird artist. Like I, I like my I like my my restrictions and stuff like that. No, I mean it makes sense. You need those for yourself. I mean, shit. Oh, I could take this mesh and I could just smooth it. Why? <laughs> because I've got the polygons, but it, it, it just you're like yeah, I don't need it. I just don't need it. Yeah, I try and instill some some restrictions on myself. So I, I tell myself, you know, I'm not going to go over seven thousand for this character, you know, kind of thing. But even then, seven thousand was still a whole bunch back then. Yeah, I'll do the, I'll do that with textures where I'll start like I'll be like I I just want to do this at five twelve. Like I don't want to go in, like I guess for my personal stuff or uh, like I just want to do something at five twelve. And having that restriction again is nice instead of 
this character has four 4096s. Well, yeah. it's just too much. You know, it's fun. <laughs> that's it's never fun true. To do, and it's a time saver, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially when when you really take into account the today's display technologies and like I was saying before, you know, 1080p is one of the worst things that happened to LCD monitors because there's so many LCD monitors out there that don't go above 1080p, mm -hmm. and especially if you're developing for console where you know, most games only render at five what five seventy whatever it is, and then they just blow it up to to 720. You know, you're never going to see any of those pixels, man. It's just like a waste of time in development sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, screen pixels, but uh, <laughs> uh, maybe I'm just cynical. No, I mean I dealt a lot. I know what you mean. I dealt a lot with it with uh, when doing UI art and stuff, where UI has got to be clean and pristine. But if you're uh, someone's running at 1080p or whatever, it's just like the UI art would get blown out or not be crisp and clear. And that, uh, I mean, same with like just character textures and environment stuff too. But it, uh, the pain is definitely felt but yeah fun pain <laughs> <laughs> just wait till we can Schadenfreude. just waiting for the for the decade when we can actually texture everything using vert uh, uh, vector images that right. be so interesting solver color and or yeah the the guy that actually invented the pixel um, actually had had an article I'd say about a year or about yeah I guess it was last year where he came out and he said that he wishes he had never invented the pixel or pushed pushed it so hard because now it's just a limitation and hmm. uh, you know that that we just can't get past yeah. hindsight's 2020 am I right but I do yeah. agree I really like it especially when you're starting a texture setting up a base layer of colors using a vertex uh, hmm. shape I guess in Photoshop and hmm. it doesn't really matter the scale of the image it still retains that integrity of the original shape and you can put like a like a pattern overlay in there and then it's, it's still retained so kind of neat mm -hmm. and neat kind of like them uh, vectors <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh hair oh hair you're the worst yeah that's why i'm just trying to make my hair so you have any art you can throw up on uh, screen share here with us? Uh, not. Uh, I could maybe pull up some of the stuff I was doing for Torchlight. Yeah, or, cool. the Torchlight Two modding stuff. I mean, uh, and, and, for, and for those who didn't know or remember from before, I, you, know, you just got your office like set up again, right? So yeah, yeah you yeah, haven't yeah. had a lot of time to really dig in there and get some stuff going. Yeah. A bunch of Home Depot Ooh. boxes. Yeah, <laughs> got a lot of you got a lot of books, bro. You look like my Skyrim house. Oh uh, yeah, let's see if I can. Oh yeah. Are there any, uh, while you're looking for your art or setting everything up, is there any books that you would recommend for environment artists out there? Um, I'm trying to think here. Uh, I I try to look at just uh, old paintings and drawings a lot for that. Like, let me see. Um, I don't really have any specific books on off the top of my head. Uh, that I got used specifically for environment art reference or um, just any reference. Uh, I kind of look at it all and soak it all in and then um, just have it in the, the bank. Um, I kind of know the pictures of the books <laughs> as opposed to the name. So what you're saying is all of those back there are like uh, hentai graphics yeah, novels? They're all, they're, yeah, they're all porn. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. I was confused up until you said that. <laughs> now I know what you're talking about. Cause I could just say I, I like I I'm kind of a guy that likes a bunch of historic books that, that like historically show sites or things. Porn. Yeah, porn, porn. historic porn, ancient porn, the 18, 1890s porn, porn yeah. the first photography. But not like I really like uh, anyway, ancient like, astronaut uh, porn. Yes, ancient ancient aliens. You know, some <laughs> of the books I keep at the office at my desk are excuse me like old architecture books like architecture encyclopedias and yeah I, uh, I got a couple of those like, myself uh, like. Best. Books about style and ornaments that have yes. uh, that don't have photos but have etched uh, like lithographs and like line drawings and like, they're very just, useful. The That's very thin right. pencil uh, or pen ink drawings are like they're perfect. Like they're just architectural renderings. And, I don't know. That stuff is great. You and Fireman guys are definitely strange. <laughs> How so? 
<laughs> architecture books and stuff. Yeah. I wouldn't know. I, I want to make sure that if, I, if this was actually built, that it would stand it, up. It would work. It would actually <laughs> stay without just falling over because I'm not some kind of asshole. Oh, look at these floating rocks. Yeah. So, some of the stuff is cool with like knowing like and understanding like ratios of like, like, uh, like doors to walls, like what the ratio is for that. And like maybe sometimes like digging into the meaning of why like an architect built a building a certain way or like why columns have so much and i mean i can't really remember well, any of it now. a like story a, behind thing a culture yeah. behind a building yeah. is very important mm. hmm. yeah that's that's pretty interesting to me well think of it I, think of it as the here's the most simple way i can just explain to someone what is a culture of a building imagine you had like a really basic kind of a like an old medieval house or like a, a really simple lean-to kind of thing going like a tent well what would you see around that tent yeah that would, would require a human being to survive okay well probably a little fire camp some uh, wood pile in the back in the side some bunch of cleared off grass uh f fish h hide yeah, yeah. Think, think, uh, uh, little cultural things they would have like pot, maybe some pots and pans like well, how how are they eating and drinking through their daily lives and possibly how do they entertain themselves like if a book or some a loot <laughs> <laughs> yeah that makes that makes sense to me um you just have to explain it because i like i said I, I love set dressing i love making things look like they've been lived in and stuff like that yeah it's always been fun to me yeah i think like art history i actually have a bunch of books that were from my art history courses in college that i kept like i, I sold a few of the books that i had from college but i still keep like the art history and actual history books that I was yeah. very interested I've got in those history. books on my desk at work. Yeah, I love just, they're just, so useful. Yeah, and not I mean not just history about paintings and art, like sculptures and pots and crap from thousands of years ago, like uh, books on like actual history of like wars and like learning about civilization and why uh, why things are how they are, or, like yeah. what caused people understanding to... the way a culture thinks. Like, yeah. well, like if, if you can really okay you're like oh ancient egypt i like those pyramids i like those fucking I like the sphinx i like shit well that's cool but if you really delve deep into the, like, the way they think and the mm -hmm. way they felt about life and the afterlife it's it, it becomes so much deeper it becomes yeah. so much more and, and things start to make a lot more sense too that's the uh, big thing is you start to understand it's you understand the shapes you understand the colors and the, you know all that kind of crap. Yeah, the, the context and exactly the, the context. Too. Yes, uh, like why why something is is done a certain way. I think I may have just overrode all all of my local brushes. That's pretty awesome. Nice, cool. Yay! Hey, why did these uh, medieval Christian Euro kind of people put crosses on everything? I don't know. It kind of looks <laughs> cool, so I'm just gonna put them on everything. How about a pentagram? Sweet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah this, the thing I pulled up here was a, one of the, an axe I had done just for fun, which uh, started as a hammer that turned into an axe. Oh, nice. I like that. So, for those about the uh, benefit of video, uh, Maury has brought up a painting that he's been uh, working on. I guess he's working on currently. It's yeah. it's pretty much it looks like a wrench with a big ass it's like a wrench and the top is a fire hydrant and it's got a huge blade on one side and it's got a leather <laughs> strop going around it. I uh, feel like I described it as accurately as possible. And yeah, this uh it started out as a hammer so that just like the like the the front end the bell end was just kind of like a big big ball peen hammer that was attached to some sort of structure or something that would that's it it's definitely like a, a ball peen hammer yeah and, yeah. and then I was, they put a blade like, on the end of the hammer <laughs> it's like, pretty yeah, cool you know, that's, that's it looks great enough. i need i need to i need to make it sharp and actually i think too looking at the the weapons that were in uh torchlight 2 they didn't have a one-handed hammer i mean I, I could make it work i guess but uh, yeah that's why that's, that's my square brush it makes me sad it's pretty cool. I think I'm gonna steal that. <laughs> no. <laughs> you didn't put "do not copy" all over it. Yeah, I don't see a watermark. Do not steal. It's going on YouTube without a watermark. 
(laughs) (laughs) You need to put more obtrusive watermarks over your art that overpower your art so that all we see is 3D master dot info like <laughs> over and over instead of the, the picture behind it, which is or, a, a, like a mediocre trash can or something. Or I could split my uh, diffuse texture up into three parts and show on one third the diffuse and on one third the spec and on one third the, <laughs> the normal. Yeah. Ugh, I hate it. Yeah. Well, some sort of weird transition so you don't get any idea how any of the pixels yeah. looked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Compress the hell out of it. Oh God! You know I can't wait for John to get back because we've already um, kind of planned out another episode that we're we're just gonna have to do it. We're gonna have to do it because of you fucking people out there. What is it? Um, it's uh, we gotta re. Uh, you know, the last time we really delved into the whole portfolio thing was last year, so we gotta you know oh, yeah. give an update and remind people to stop doing stupid ass shit in your portfolios because. Yeah, I, I just recently some. had to go through the hiring process, and it was just a pain in the ass. The, the people submit these things; they don't even, they don't even pay attention. I, I got another flash one recently the other day. I was like, "Wow, yeah, wow." Or, or it'll be some stuff that's like, "Oh, what?" You know, when you when you see a problem, like a, a recurring theme. And it's one of those things that, well, somebody had to be the one to say, yeah, do it like this. To yep. make all these people say, oh, I'm going to do it like that. And it's always, it's it's so, oh, God, it's so frustrating. You're just trying to look through applicants and it's, oh, I can't even find your work. Oh, we'll get into it, John, next time. But, geez. Oh. Yeah, this is, this is my hand. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh God! <laughs> you should spell the stop that way. The that Reddit spells it now. It's like S T A. What is it? P H? Is that it? Stop! What? The stop! It's like something. It's like whatever. Stop. Wait, please, no, stop! It's spelled S T A H P. Stop! S-T-A-H-P. stop. That's it. Wow! I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna ship my game with a big watermark. Do not steal. I think that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Just gonna say it. Original character, do not steal. <laughs> well, right on, guys. You think we should uh, wrap this up then? Sure. Sweet. Uh, yeah. Anything you guys want to add or pro- possibly promote? You mm. feel is important. I know Mori has already said how much Epic is great a billion times, so he's we're sold. <laughs> we're sold on I that. <laughs> well, I mean, for the people out there that don't know that don't know Epic, you might. They might need some help with publicity for yeah. our podcast. <laughs> for yeah. those that don't know, they make this thing called UDK and all kinds of video games like Gears of War. Mm-hmm. You might be able to check them out. At, <laughs> you should uh, check Epic them out yeah. on the internet. They, they're, they're an up-and-comer. You know, small, small group. Small group of guys just up-and-coming. <laughs> small guys out of North Carolina. Just trying, to, some just trying to make a game. Just trying to get by. Yeah. <laughs> And we are we do have some positions open at epicgames.com slash careers. There you go. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. There are uh there are positions I'm not exactly sure where, but uh I, I have, <laughs> look we have we have some in uh some in Cary, some in Poland, uh oh, nice. there are there are a few in Salt Lake City, uh Seattle. We just opened a and or started That's a new right. studio, uh, studio in Seattle. Uh, we open them up everywhere. Yeah. And uh, the Seattle studio is uh is uh I think predominantly uh, engineers they're looking for there, uh, not as much artists. Uh, there's like a position up in Korea, so Tokyo, and um, there's a bunch listed on the site at epicgamescom careers. Epic's a worldwide company, folks. Yeah, for those of you that don't know. So yeah, Jesse, anything I, I, else? I, w- I would like to meet the person that listens to this podcast and has no idea what Epic is. <laughs> You know, I was listening to your show and I learned something today. There's a company, yeah, yeah, that that guy, that fucking guy. I think that's an impossible thing. I feel like that's impossible. Well, that's awesome. Um, eh, I don't really have anything right now that I'm trying to promote outside of my game and studio. I guess yeah. and that's got its, you know, yeah. Get your Facebook that's page. Fine. Get your, get your 
Twitter, Dinosaur Games. My twits. All that shit. Twitter. All my twitting. I'm well, still fantastic. trying to understand what Twitter is, or not is, but how a lot of that stuff works. <laughs> I can't figure that out. Like sending messages to people, it's like, how? I don't get it. It's, it's like oh, magnets. It's, yeah. How do well, they work? okay, here's what you do. You have to follow someone and they have to follow you. And you do that, then you can direct a message. You can DM. That's the that's, that's, that's the quintessential. Uh, below that, you can just put somebody's name in first and send them a message. And unless both people follow them, they don't see it. Unless they click on your yeah. timeline to see your full list of people, every, oh. your full list of tweets. Oh, my God. That's a <laughs> lot of work. But really, the whole point is it's just to drop info. Like, Don't be like, oh, I'm yeah. eating, eating a sandwich. Like, try to Taking say down. things. are like, oh, here's something that's happening. Yeah. You, I try to sometimes I goof around, but or like I retweet something I'm interested in just because I like it. Yeah, that's kind of what I use it for. It's like, hey, that person said something cool. You should yeah. see this. But, but another crazy thing, if you want to be a nut job, it's uh, pretty much the phone number of every celebrity. Yeah, yeah. I do. Uh, I can't remember. Like Nathan Fillion, I think I follow him, and a couple other people on Twitter. Uh, Tweet. I will have to learn how to use this Twitter. I'm sure that's going to take off someday too. I mean, it's pretty cool because I, I, I've actually suggested it to artists before because there's a lot of people that are out there that are like, uh, you know, famous people that are just looking for a quick Photoshop. Especially comedians do this a lot. Hey, can somebody Photoshop me and this guy are together for something? Uh, and and some comedians will, or bands will be like, hey. He's, Somebody want to make our poster? And you know, it's something that people of, if you know your way around Photoshop, you can do something really quick, real, real, real easy that's impressive to anybody. Right, so free, so free labor for rich people. Right. So what you can do is you can get what you can do is you can get your, uh, you know, name out there. You can get like tickets to free shows. You know, the idea is like if it's people you like, you can build a relationship and they'll retweet your shit and, and you can get your word out. It's like networking in another way. Mm-hmm. That's one of the biggest benefits I've found to things like Twitter is you're 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 able to network on a on a grander scale outside of uh, just the circle of people in the game industry. Yeah, I've been looking to do. I mean, I've been like using Photoshop for so many years now. I want to start doing like Photoshop tutorials and videos and stuff, and tweet that. Like, use Twitter as a medium to just be like, oh, here's a Photoshop thing. That's a very good thing to do. Uh, there's a there's a Twitter account I draw girls that is just a bomb at that. It drops like three video tutorials a day. Awesome. Um, and I just wanted to clarify that I don't want to. I'm not saying I want to whore myself to celebrities, but it's actually <laughs> one of the things I've always wanted to do is kind of like paint like like metal band covers or things like that. Like yeah. I, I I've done a lot of posters and flyers for like shows and stuff back before all this stuff, and I just enjoy doing it. It's fun mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. Making the unreadable band logos. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I think it's cool to promote things that I like. And it, yeah. Oh, here, let me make a fucking Photoshop of a comedian that I'm going to go see next week anyway. It's fucking, yeah. yeah. I don't like, yeah. you know, don't pander to everybody, but you know, it's supporting it's things you like. It's like voting with a yes. dollar. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Make the dollar. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think some people have gotten into trouble for using uh, Twitter as, you know, for sex prostitution uh, <laughs> I want to be careful this show gets put out to all everyone listens to this so. global going global alright well uh, hey anybody if, you know, unless that's it alright we're good to go hey, I got cool. nothing. great yeah, thanks for awesome. having me guys it's fun. yeah thanks for having me and uh, yeah you're welcome back anytime if you want to if you've got anything to say it's not uh, this... retardedly political or something you know <laughs> Hey, I want to shortest. talk about chemtrails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stem cells, it's important. Yeah. Well, cool. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for being here. Uh, as yeah. always, you can follow us on Twitter at Crunchcast. Go to crunchstudios.com. Uh, you can uh, do the YouTube channel. We got the MP3s that'll be up. We got the uh, Vimeo for the backup on the video. Shit, we got it going on. There's a Facebook page. Yeah. Like it. And <laughs> Jesse will get a message the saying fuck? that we were liked. So, thanks. Look at shirts. Order the shirts. Oh, shirt? Sure, we don't have shirts. Oh, the koozies. We, 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 we need to get some drive. merch. Yeah, we do. I'm sure. We're, we're-